The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hey guys, it's Ben Nash here. I'm one of the co-founders at Ensemble and founder of financial advice company Pivot Wealth, which is my business baby I started from scratch a little bit over seven years ago. In that time, I've leveraged some of the learnings of the Ensemble community to scale the business to become one of the better known financial advice companies for high income accumulators in Australia. And through this podcast, you can join me each Tuesday as I have the absolute privilege of interviewing some amazing people where I'm going to selfishly be able to learn and continue my journey to improve every area of my advice business. Hopefully, you can learn a few things on that journey as well. Jump over to Ensemble.com and if you haven't already signed up to learn and share from others or simply download the app. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor team and today I'm here with Cara Graham. Cara is Principal Wealth Advisor at the Wealth Designers over in the uh, the great state of WA. Cara, great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Ben. It's excellent to be here. And particularly good for you to have you here given that you're on mat leave. Um Although, you know, as uh, as I sometimes hear from my wife, perhaps that's a bit of an excuse to get out of the, the baby talk uh, as well. But uh, yeah, appreciate, appreciate you taking the time as you're balancing all of those uh, plates and no doubt we'll end up chatting a little bit more about that. Um, but I thought maybe a good place to start is if you could talk us through like your, your journey and advice and how you've ended up where you are today. Yeah, sure, sure. So um, I entered advice land back in 2006. So I had finished school. I was a fresh 17 year old, had no idea what I wanted to do um, no. and ended up getting a job rather than going to uni. I thought maybe I'll figure it out first and then head to uni. So I ended up getting a job um, for a, a pretty prestigious firm, which I didn't really even realize at the time um, because I was, you know, a 17 year old, you don't really <laughs> know a lot at that stage, but it ended up being such a good opportunity for me. I, I stayed there for five years. They paid for part of my uni degree. Um, I moved up the ranks, uh, sort of, so to speak. You know, went from being the um, the office junior uh, through to the business unit manager at one stage, like the administration manager, and then uh, and then on to becoming an associate advisor. So it was a pretty good five years. But um, towards the end of that. The organization got bought out by one of the major banks in Australia and they just changed a lot. The culture changed, the sort of management decisions got centralized over to the East Coast and I really just decided it wasn't a place that I wanted to to work at anymore. Um, what I, where I wanted to work, I wanted to work somewhere where the owner, the decision maker could look me in the eye and tell me about the decisions they made rather than, you know, getting almost like an anonymous email saying we're making this change, we're taking away this support resource, et cetera. So I mm. went on the lookout to find a new business to work for and I came across the wealth designers. So that was over 11 years ago now. It was back in 2011 um, and I met Troy McMillan. He's the, the sort of owner and you know, primary owner, founder of the business and and really, I never looked back. You know, we've had some ups and downs along the way. I think that everybody does over the course of 11 years. But, mm. uh, you know, for every sort of challenge we've faced, I always sort of thought, you know, I don't actually want to work anywhere else. You know, for all of the, the, the bad stuff, there's there's way more good stuff within our business. So 11 years later, just, yeah. 
Nice. And uh, yeah, I feel like you you got a little little fortunate. I won't say lucky, but a little bit fortunate in that because uh, I know Troy runs a, a solid outfit and it's great to, to watch the wealth designers just crushing it uh, over there as well. Um, I had Troy on the podcast a little while back and mentioned to him that the wealth designers is one of the businesses that I sort of looked up to when I was starting my own business uh, seven years ago. And it's um, it's so good to see you guys going from strength to strength and just dominating over there. Cara, one of the things that we were just chatting mid offline and and um, talking about business ownership, and I know that you've gone through a bit of a journey uh, around that as well. Can you just uh, talk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I guess when I was a young advisor, let's let's call it going through uni and things like that, one of my aspirations, probably my biggest goal, is I wanted to be a business owner. That was really what I. I wanted to strive for or what I, I felt like I should strive for in a sense. And I achieved that goal a few years ago. So I was, um, when I was still under 30, I was sort of, we made it, sort of felt like it was a pretty big deal. I was under 30 and a business owner. I thought that was pretty cool. And I bought into the business. And the last few years have been pretty challenging for me personally. I've had some family challenges. I've had a family member pass away. I've had my parents getting you know, a bit more elderly. I've got a, a sick brother uh, as well, and and I've also had two kids in that time. So it's been pretty full on. And I guess what I've realised in that time that being a business owner actually isn't that important to me. You know, I I think on reflection and after everything I've learned over the last few years, that you know maybe I almost thought it should be important. I thought maybe that was the pinnacle of of being in advice land, but. Really, what I've learned is that I want to be senior member of the team. I want to be able to contribute to decision, but I don't actually want all of that added stress of being a business owner. You know, I'd rather, um, uh, you know, be able to focus on my clients, do a really excellent job looking after them, and then be able to to come home and, and focus on my family. You know, that my immediate family and my, you know, and my parents and my siblings. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that a lot of people, and it's pretty common in advice that that's the thing that people work towards as you um, feel like it's sort of the progression as you get more senior uh, in a team. But like we, we've we been recruiting advisors over the last couple of years and, and chatting to people. And I think there's a lot of people that say that that's their, their ultimate goal, but don't really realize the things that, that come with that, the extra the extra sort of responsibilities, the risks, the uh, the stresses, and all of those sorts of things, and um, like I love sort of running my business and and the challenge that comes with that. But uh, there there are days where I wish I just had to turn up to work and and do my thing uh, as well. And I, I think it's a it's an interesting lesson for people, and and particularly I think like depends on the business and what the dynamics of that is, but. Perhaps in a smaller business, if you're the one that you're taking on all of that responsibility yourself anyway, then it might make more sense. But when you're in a, a like a, a business that's on a strong growth path where there's so much stuff going on, that that maybe, you know, being being senior in a team, it's going to be fulfilling and you still have the same control, but you don't have the those extra responsibilities and the extra the extra pressures and stress as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think... Um... You know, I, I really look up to everybody that does run a business because I can appreciate how difficult it is. You know, it's so incredibly challenging. And let's face it, financial advice land is bloody hard. You know, everything, it feels like everything is changing. It feels like we're getting stuff thrown at us from all angles in terms of challenges. And that's probably never going to go away. You know, I, I, I was chatting to with one of our team the other day and we were sort of talking about how, you know, every year, at the wealth designers there's some kind of change project and we're always going we just need to get through this and then and we just need to get through this and then and you know then as soon as we finish it we've got another change project so it, you know it's not going to get any easier and and you know, that's probably just been a change of perspective for me that, totally you know i want to be part of the solution but maybe i just don't necessarily want um the weight on my shoulders all the time yeah, I think change definitely seems like the constant ever since like the FOFA changes and everything. Thankfully, it seems like they've been ratcheting up the, the you know the compliance and admin, and I think it really has had a, a quite a positive impact on advice and advice consumers. Thankfully, with what we're seeing at the moment, that that has some potential that it may come back the other way. But 
given that the landscape is changing, the technology is changing, the markets are changing, people are changing, consumers are changing, it means that there's always something else to um, that you need to be changing if you want to be keeping up. And yeah, there, there is there's a, there's a lot a lot there, and particularly in multi advisor businesses, it's like you've got that extra dimension of being able to create a, an approach that's going to cater for different personalities, different thinking profiles, like all of those sorts of things. So it means that there's a, we're, we're never short of uh, something to to look at uh, as well. And I think in a lot of cases you can get the same sort of empowerment, the same control, but um, yeah, not not have to necessarily be the driver. And you know, I find it challenging enough for me. And like, I've got a couple of young kids, but my wife does a lot of the heavy lifting there. I, and I'm fortunate to be in that position where she can do that. I think if you, you're balancing those things out as well, like it's just an extra dimension to that challenge as well. Mm, no, definitely. Cara, what's uh, for you, what's been the most challenging part of your advice journey? Mm, I, I think there's probably two parts to this. And maybe I've just alluded to it before is is change. But, you know, I think um, we've got a bit of a, a continuous change culture within our business, constant and never ending improvement. And we're always evolving a little bit, you know, a little bit along the way, sort of, you know, a little bit of change every day in a sense. But some of the large scale changes that we've had to have been, been so challenging. And then, you know, ultimately, as you're implementing them as well, you, you learn things along the way, which maybe would have impacted the decision that you make um, from there too. So then you're, you're kind of you know, piling change on change, which is quite hard. And, and then the other sort of part that I think has also been really challenging is just having the right people around me. So, mm. um, you know, we've had a lot of success in terms of recruitment, but, you know, I'd probably, you know, I think it's fair to say we've probably also had a couple of failures, you know, a fair few failures in a sense in there as well, you know, just having, you know, the wrong people join our organisation, which maybe, you know, maybe they're not a cultural fit. Maybe they're, um, you know, don't have the the sort of same, you know, principle things and, and you know, we've had to make some hard calls along the way as well to, to sort of exit people from business or have people depart. Um, uh. I said, you know, sometimes you look back and you go, well, you know, it's always hard to lose somebody, but maybe... Maybe that is the right thing um, for us at this time. So I feel like, like most businesses, have probably felt like always recruiting. Um, you know, but partly that's because we've been growing a lot over that time as well. But um, it's just it's you know your team is is the most important thing. Let's face it. You know you can have you can be a great advisor, but if you don't have you know good support under you or around you rather, I should say, um, then you're not going to be very effective. Because you're just so limited, and you know, I think we've got lots of really awesome people, um, you know, there. But we just always seem a little bit short. We always just really feel like we need that that one more assistant or that one more person who's really good at the technical side, that one you know, really good at modelling, and and, um, and that's just so hard. You know, I think especially in this environment right now, I'd probably say. Mm-hmm. You know, every advisor is probably crying out for, for a few more people to, to support and help them. And and um, and it's just, yeah, it's challenging, challenging to find them. Yeah, I think the people part is the biggest challenge, finding good people, supporting them the right way, having them mm-hmm. work in their, in their flow and, you know, not being overwhelmed but be busy enough, then the right people yeah. underneath them. And we're trying to grow a business and manage the commercial side of things. It'd be great to just... You know, hire 50 people and then everyone's nice and comfortable but then that doesn't work commercially um, either as well and I, I think the point that you made about finding good people and sometimes you ha- have someone that's just the wrong fit and you know that's not good for them it's not good for you it's not good for the business not good for the clients either um, mm. so I think that finding good people goes a long way but we, as a as a senior team member in your team and as an advisor, essentially leading the clients and then responsible for the people underneath you, what 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 what's your biggest or your top tip around how to how to get the most out of the people that are supporting you in the advice that you're providing as a frontline advisor? Oh gosh, I I reckon it's just treating people like humans. You know, having having empathy for their situation, giving them flexibility you know COVID's probably been great for that in a sense that we've got more flexibility around the way that we that way that we work but I think that it's really important to kind of recognize 
people for who they are. Like, you know, maybe this sounds a little bit silly, but, you know, some people are morning people and some people are afternoon people. So, you know, having a set eight to five business hours or something along those lines, it just doesn't actually work for everybody. And you can't make everybody fit into the same box. And I know, you know, certainly if I just think about some of the members of our team, you know, we've got people that are working different hours or, you know, almost like peak in terms of their productivity at 10 p.m. at night, but, you know, which uh, you, you've got to kind of give them room to to be able to do that the way that, you know, work the way that they want to work. And sometimes mm. that's a bit frustrating because maybe, um, you know, maybe you want them there at 7.30 in the morning when, you know, like I, I'm more of a morning person in terms of my productivity, um, yeah. you know, from there. So there's challenges in it as well, but you've got to give people just, you know, room to be themselves. And even we had um, a new staff member join a couple of months um, before I went on mat leave and, you know, something um, sort of happened to them and, and you, know, you know, I was sort of saying, you know, just why don't you just pack up for the day and go home and, you know, take care of yourself. And she was actually so surprised that I cared, which, you know, for me, I was like, what, wouldn't everybody think this way? You know, wouldn't everybody just say, go and put yourself first? But she said, you know, at some of the other businesses she'd worked for, that just wasn't the case. And I I was really astounded because I thought that was just the normal thing to do. But, you know, clearly, um, clearly it's not always, which is a bit sad. But, um, yeah. I think, um, yeah, treating people like humans, having some empathy. I think that that the point that you make about having people work in their zone is is is, all, is an important one as well. Like, how do they want to be working? And as you say, the COVID situation sort of pushed us into that, or, or sort of accelerated that um, that our need to ad- adapt to that as well. But I think ultimately, like, people have jobs to deliver certain outcomes and if someone wants to get to an outcome one way really like it's the outcome that's important not not necessarily uh how you get how it's on yeah that's work yeah exactly so i think uh yeah it's probably not as common as it should be but it's it seems to be more businesses are catching on to that um as well and i think that that's where as you say like we you, people are feeling empowered to to do that to 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 get to the outcome um, but do it in a way that works for them. Ultimately, that's mm. that, that's the goal. Absolutely. And you create loyalty through doing that as well, you know, because then yes. people, you know, can appreciate the flexibility and know that you do care about them and you're going to support them. That's right, yeah. And, I, again, like going back to those outcomes, it's like if you're getting there, does it matter if someone goes and, you know, has to drop their kids off somewhere or deal with an appointment or a personal thing? I think the COVID situation, again, sort of accelerated that, that people were forced into their bunkers and, you know, you just get that immediate exposure. I know that, like, I've got some mates work in banking and for them it's very much like even more than, than financial advice. It's like you, you're expected to be almost like a robot and then you just – there to do your deals and you know be ultra professional all of the time and not to say the financial advisors aren't professional but i think bankers take it probably to another level and mm-hmm. um yeah sort of forced on them and it breaks down some of those barriers and the end result is building better relationships with people as you say more loyalty you know both with your customers and and your team as well and i think that, that you get that teamwork flowing and that's where the, the magic happens mm-hmm. Cara, I'm keen to to hear. Like you, you've been at it for you know for a fair while in, in advice. What would you say? What's the most difficult skill that you've had to master to be the advisor that you are today? Most difficult skill, to be honest, is probably delegating. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I think um, I'm generally a pretty controlling person. I um, it, you know I think sort of uh, I'd probably label myself a bit of a perfectionist as well which can be a real strength but it can also be a big downfall because then mm. you know maybe you're working on things a little bit too long or, or sort of you know you, you're never going to get things perfect in a sense um and so i'd probably say that delegating is something that i've continuously struggled with in a sense but have just had to get better and better at it as time has gone on um mm. And, you know, there'll be days where I slip back and go, oh, you know, I don't have, have time to sort of pass this on. But that would almost be one of the things I'd go back and kind of really tell myself as a younger advisor is, 
is just, uh, you know, to, to sort of, I guess, um, you know, to sort of trust uh, more and delegate more. And, you know, it, it's almost that, what we were saying a moment ago, that, you know, maybe someone's not going to do it exactly my way, but it's still going to be, you know, done. It's going to be done well, uh, you know, from from there. And, and um, yeah, I think that's probably something I'll continue working on for the rest of my life. <laughs> Man. But, it's, yeah, it's certainly been certainly been something I've had to had to focus a bit more on as well as things have gone busier and life has gotten last few years. Well, with a growing client base and a growing family, it sort of does get forced on you on you a little bit because you reach a point where it's just not possible to to do all of the things. But I think, you know, tying that back to what you're saying around team and getting the right people around you, I think it's an also an important thing because there's not many people that like to be micromanaged. There, there are a few. There are a few people that want, you know, really clear guardrails and work really well in that um, in that sort of environment. But I would say that they're broadly um, in the minority. So mm-hmm. when you're when you're doing that, it can become a bit of a roadblock for for the people around you to um, to get the best out of them or to feel like they've got you know, the control of their destiny that, that they want to get as well. So, uh, you know, one advantage, you get more stuff done for you instead of having to do it yourself. But secondly, you you're, you are empowering those people around you um, mm. as well. Cara, I, I know that you're you currently are on mat leave, but just like in, in your career and as an advisor and with your clients, what, what are you focused on uh, now? What's sort of coming up for you? Well, uh, I mean, I guess right now in this moment, my focus is really on, my family and and you know even just going back to work at some stage next year uh, I think a big focus for me would be about achieving the elusive work-life balance that uh, I think everybody probably struggles with it to, to a certain extent so one of mm-hmm. um, my family's financial goal is um, for my wife and I to both be able to work part-time until our girls are in school so you know we've worked really hard over the last sort of, you know, decade and a half to kind of get to a point where financially we can afford to be able to, to you know, sort of work less and live more and um, be around our kids a little bit more from there. So, uh, you know, it's probably not a very worky sort of focus, but but really that's that's what's matter, what matters to me at the moment is, is, um, is prioritising my family a bit more and um, mm. working less. And how do you practically, like, how do you structure that with you being in as an advisor? Um, you know, you've got clients that you're looking after and responsible for. You, maybe you haven't got this all figured out exactly yet, but mm-hmm. how do you how do you envisage you managing that moving forward? Well, even before I went on math leave, I re- moved down to a four-day work week um, for a period of time. But just before I went on leave, I did have to bring it back up a little bit, um, back to the five days because I was struggling to get things done um mm. but i am a big advocate for the 14 work week at the moment um just because our youngest is so little my wife's only been working three days a week um as well so we've had you know lots of family time over the last couple of months and then what i would envision when i do go back to work is again say having three day work week um but perhaps initially we'll just see how that tracks and you know i'm pretty realistic in the sense that even if maybe I'm only in the office for three days or have three sort of set work days, yes, I'll probably do a little bit of work on those other days, you know, in terms of checking emails and feeling involved. And I'm totally fine with that, um, just to sort of smooth things over. But I think it's it's more so just about setting the limits and some boundaries. So, you know, at the Wealth Designers, we've always um, kind of worked on different metrics in terms of, you know, our target number of meetings per week, our target clients that we want to sort of meet and, and engage with and and again i guess it's just sort of resetting some of those um in line with with how much i do want to want to work over that period of time well just making sure that you know it's achievable trusting my team you know as much as i can as well to to manage the rest and you know we've got so many great advisors at the moment and i really big believer that um different personality types work best with different clients so, you know, I often would get referrals and I'll have a little bit of a chat with them and I might actually feel, you know what, actually you'd be a you know great client for Robin or for David or for Dawn or whoever it might be that, mm. you know, if I get a referral, I don't need to 
follow that through all of the way. They might actually be a better fit for somebody else. So, you know, more than more than happy. And we've got a, a really good kind of team culture that it's not sort of every advisor for themselves. It's really about mm. how we achieve as a team. Um, and I've always, I think that's that's a really good culture to have. And I, I'd, um, I, I, you know, want to make sure that we, we continue to have that. Absolutely. Yeah, I know when my wife and I had our first child, like, it sort of forced a level of putting some extra boundaries in place to allow me to provide her with a level of support and also to be present as a as a dad as well. When we had the second one, though, it was like game on and it needed to sort of take those to, to the next level. And, you know, um, as you know, you got, you, you're got you balancing the two. It is a pretty full-on um, sort of thing. So I have personally been forced to to sort of do something not feel like forced in a way that I was very um you know keen on on doing but um to do that and it's it's been really interesting because I think like like for me like I've spoken to a number of other advisors in the same position that it's like you feel like this really deep sense of obligation for your clients and the things that are going on and you feel like you need to be available you know, all, well, like not all of the time, but almost all of the time uh, as things come up. But when you, I've found for me that when I put those boundaries in place, the world didn't stop. Things still have happened. Clients got looked after. The the important things still all move forward. But you you are sort of, you know, being human and, and able to do the things that you need to do or want to be doing in, in that space as well. So uh, it's been been really interesting that I think like, uh, easy to 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 have that feeling that you need to be there, but when you're not, and you just try it, and then it, everything just works, and it is sort of pretty enlightening and you know empowering to to allow you to do that as well. Oh, definitely. I think um, you know, I guess it's is you know not just kids, but you know just different life experiences can put things into into perspective. And what I've sort of often tried to do is almost in the sense train my clients so you know maybe i'm training them that i'm not available out of business hours or i'm not available on the weekend or you know i'm not available on my you know day off unless it's uh you know it's a time critical thing in a sense and for the most part people are pretty supportive of that because you know you're working with these right. clients you're getting to know them they they want the best for you as well you know they don't want yeah. you to be to be sacrificing your family time when they've um, you know they, you know they, you know know of my family and heard of them or seen pictures and you know they want they want me to be yeah. able to enjoy that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that it 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 often d- just deepens your connection with them when they realise that you're not just some finance robot on the on the other. No, so, yeah, you're a real person. <laughs> Cara, my last question for you is if you could if you could turn back time and and go back to the start of your journey in advice and do one thing differently, what would it be? You know, I, I don't think I'd do anything differently. I, I think that, um, you know, I've had a lot of successes and a lot of failures over the years, but each of them has really led me to be where I am. That sounds really corny, but, <laughs> but it, you know, for every kind of, you know, mistake or failure that I've had, I think I've probably become a better person or a better advisor because of it. And yeah, I, you know, I think I, I think everything is, has been pretty valuable, even even if sometimes it's been incredibly challenging and uh, mm. you know caused a lot of stress and heartache and you know tears, you know, <laughs> multiple times. But you know, it's all it's all just part of the journey. And yeah, no, it's all it's all been all been positive in in one way or another, as as challenging as the last. It's it's the the old thing that the ob- the obstacle is the way sort of thing. And yeah. As long as, as long as you're learning those lessons, that it all contributes to the next step and the next step and the next step. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. I love that, Cara. Thank you so much for joining us and and sharing your insights. And again, for uh, for taking the time when you're on mat leave. Um, yeah, great great to see you guys smashing it over there. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me.